And so we begin by setting our motivation, a motivation to do whatever we possibly can to attain the peerless state of enlightenment by perfecting all the practices of the Bodhisattva on the Bodhisattva path. And to do that, we need to have a thorough understanding of those practices based on an unmistaken presentation. And so it is with this in mind this morning, we have come to listen to a brief explanation on the, uh, the great treatise of the stages of the path to enlightenment, uh, the outlines of that text, uh, as composed by the great Lama Tsongkhapa. Don't and so continuing with our examination of the six perfections and uh, in particular the perfection of patience uh, looking at the uh, three main classifications of patience of the patience of not returning harm uh, for harm and uh, the second of uh, taking on or accepting uh, suffering and this is the one that we have been examining and we will continue on with now the perfection or uh, patience of accepting suffering. And so, uh, for example, with regard to the um, taking on or accepting of uh, suffering, it had uh, in turn uh, 
three different uh, subheadings relating to one, and the fact that suffering itself has certain qualities uh, to it. And the second is that uh, there is a, the quality also uh, of uh, the patience of being able to bear hardships. And thirdly, and that in regard to the perfection of patience, there was a quality to, to the gradual uh, accepting of suffering, you know, starting small and then being able to work towards being able to accept greater sufferings just through the force of habit itself. So the first of these looking into uh, the qualities of suffering, they were enumerated as five. Uh, the first of these was referring to the suffering, uh, the quality of suffering which spurs us towards uh, liberation. So develop that mentality which strives towards uh, liberation. And so this uh, because uh, without suffering, uh, then there is no sense of gaining that sort of de definite emergence or the quality that really develops our renunciation. And so therefore suffering allows us to generate the renunciation and that the, the, the mind which strives for liberation. And secondly, is referred to as the, the quality of dispelling arrogance. And that through uh, uh, suffering, uh, we get a, a sense of our own kind of more, uh, we're brought down to earth. We are kind of a sense of, of reducing our arrogance, reducing our sense of superiority. Uh, thirdly, is the uh, suffering, the quality of suffering uh, that sp uh, to really inspires us to avoid uh, negativity because uh, through the harsh feelings of suffering, through that sort of experiential understanding, uh, we, we kind of get the connection between the non-virtuous causes that created it and this result now of an undesirable uh, suffering. And so therefore we understand, okay, uh, negativity is what caused this, therefore I will avoid negativity because I understand uh, based on this suffering. Uh, fourthly, um, the, uh, the quality of um, kind of taking a liking to the accumulation of virtue, uh, really a sort of a more enthusiasm uh, for uh, generating virtue, uh, and for the opposite reason, because well, we see that through the torment of suffering, uh, we want the opposite of that, we desire happiness, and therefore we know that it is virtuous causes that bring about that, uh, that happiness, therefore it makes sense that I am spurred now to, on to uh, more enthusiasm for generating virtue. And uh, fifthly and finally, uh, the uh, quality of suffering that actually uh, generates more compassion uh, for us, for uh, all sentient beings wandering in cyclic existence because having assessed based on our own experience uh, all the suffering that we have undergone uh, we have some feeling for all others who are similarly experiencing that suffering therefore uh, compassion uh, is facilitated <laughs> ตัวเนี่ยจงอัตละครับที่เขียนไปตัวเองชิดอันนี้จึงเด็กก็จะได้ตั้งสมบัติตามตามสุดๆตัดเด็กเขียนไปตั้งยังสุดๆอีกเร
the, the qualities of the great purpose or the great meaning uh, attached to the attainment of liberation. And secondly, uh, the quality of uh, the benefit of being able to uh, completely eradicate or reverse the uh, countless sufferings. Tungetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulangetangulanget
The, uh, the second of these points then is the uh, looking at the, and the benefits of uh, reversing or putting stop to countless sufferings. And the argument here is that, uh, you know, even for if I can, by uh, experiencing uh, some kind of smaller inconvenience, sufferings in my human existence now, if I can, by that means, and put a stop to you know, really intensive, long-term, countless sufferings related to uh, I the rebirths in cyclic existence and particularly in the lower realms. Uh, surely I would take that uh, smaller suffering now. Surely it would be worthwhile, it would be a smart thing to do uh, to undergo this sort of suffering now in order to really prevent or avoid greater suffering uh, later on. So it's saying here that uh, the, uh, if by means of the uh, insignificant sufferings, uh, hardships that endu are endured uh, in a human existence, uh, that that can uh, permanently dispel uh, the sufferings uh, related to the, uh, the countless sufferings uh, related to cyclic existence in general and, uh, and the hell realms uh, related to the lower realms in particular. And then uh, surely uh, that would be the correct thing to do. So reflect well on this. So uh, that brings us up to date, and uh, that's a quick recap on uh, the uh, some of the issues that were covered uh, last week. So we're looking at the third uh, main uh, outline uh, this th this week: uh, how it is not difficult to bear suffering if you gradually grow accustomed to it, starting with the small. And so again, as it says, to say oh, yes, it's it is difficult, it is hard. Uh, to uh, at the beginning to try and to really control the mind and to really bear suffering in that regard. But uh, there is nothing that does not become easier uh, through habituation. So it's really saying here that to, to really, you know, reflect on the taking or accepting of suffering with an armor-like uh, mentality. And so in this way, like we develop this sort of sense of resilience, uh, armor-like uh, thought so that we can kind of blend that thought uh, with uh, the inevitable suffering. And this way we will gradually develop the capacity to, uh, the great capacity to uh, accept uh, greater sufferings. So, so when we talk about the habituated mindset, we're talking about developing an attitude like the, the Bodhisattva has, where they can, you know, obviously give away all their possessions and so on without any thought, but even their bodies, they are able to part with the bodies for the benefit of others, uh, alike as if they were giving away some vegetable, as easy as that. And so this, of course, isn't the case at the beginning 
of course they like us very much bound to their possessions bound to their bodies with the self-cherishing attitude and then after meeting with a qualified um, a spiritual teacher and uh, relying on them uh, engaging in all of the practices given to them and that they gradually habituate 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 and render that mind then capable of being able to cope with these great decisions uh, later on So the power of habituation uh, can never be underestimated. And that, you know, for somebody who has really trained uh, their mind in, the, in that way to constantly, constantly habituate again and again and again, that they can you know, contemplate, for example, uh, the suffering of a hell being and make the determination that they will completely exchange their sense of well-being with that hell being and take on uh, that suffering of that hell being. Now, that's not possible. That's not, they're not able to do that. That's not possible. But they say if it was possible, they, would be, they can say unequivocally, without a shadow of a doubt, that yes, I would be absolutely willing to do that. I would do that if I could. So that sort of habituation where there's no doubt that you would enter, enter into you know, that sort of great suffering because it's, it's beneficial, it's necessary. So the, the, what's being proposed here, of course, is not sort of a, this sort of a, a, a masochistic uh, uh, attitude uh, of, uh, of liking uh, suffering. Now, suffering is not to be liked, uh, but one is seeing uh, the common sense of taking on or being able to accept suffering so that it, uh, on the one hand, causes the least disturbance or strife to oneself in the short term so that one can maintain a certain level headedness and peace of mind uh, regardless of uh, actually what the feeling is what the, the suffering is and so it requires a tremendous application of intelligence okay so you say in the short term it's not going to disturb me but it's not going to disturb me also because I have 
and looked into the long term, uh, the more profound benefits of being able to respond wisely to suffering, that I can work more readily for the benefit of myself and other sentient beings, if I'm able to maintain that sort of equanimity of mind, uh, I am able to uh, certainly uh, avoid creating any other causes for future suffering in the future. A very profound understanding. And that so when one is able to look into the big picture of both temporary and ultimate uh, benefits, uh, then it's the wise, intelligent uh, option to accept suffering. Mm -hmm. What and so, of course, there's the uh, avoidance of uh, suffering, of not creating the causes so that one does not uh, experience suffering. Uh, but, of course, when the causes have already been created, the conditions arise, uh, they meet, and then there's the arisal of the fruition or the result, and then one is inevitably going to experience uh, that suffering result. So at that point, it's, that's when we use that wise, that wisdom really, that wise intelligence to say, okay, the best thing is to find out how I can accept this suffering, how I can work with this suffering, how I can take some positive out of this suffering. Right. <laughs> Share <coughs> so again, once again, we see that for practitioners of love, of compassion, of the, those trying to integrate the mind of enlightenment, and that uh, wisdom is absolutely necessary and that uh, you know one must proceed in all one's uh, applications in this way uh, with uh, uh, our loving kindness our compassion and so on combined uh, with wisdom and that uh, these uh, particular virtuous qualities arise in dependence on wisdom and they need to be acted or manifested in companion with in connection with wisdom it's so important because uh, if we don't, then we are not able to bring these practices to their perfection. And that we will not be also uh, acting in harmony with, the, if, with reality, with the actuality of the situation. And uh, once we're out of kilter with the actuality of the situation, and that gives the mental affliction an opportunity to take over, uh, to commandeer uh, that particular uh, mindset. So it's so important for us to understand that with the combination, combining our method side with wisdom is both the basis on which we can uh, establish happiness for ourselves and eradicate suffering. <laughs> Namjuj 
So we're looking into like the the wisdom, the intelligent wisdom here. That's so so important. That uh, especially from the point of view of us beginners, and that you know we are operating on kind of like a direct sort of uh, uh, take on on many things, and that uh, there is a great great limit to our understanding in that way. That uh, you know we. Um, uh, need to apply valid reasoning at every step because it's um, just in terms of what we initially hear and in which, on which we initially understand uh, we we are mistaken understandings so many times you know we, we kind of run into mistakes so many times so we have to kind of gain that habit of applying a valid reasoning to analyze to check uh, is that uh, correct? Is my understanding, my take on that, uh, really, really uh, correct? And that employs uh, both the different ca categories of wisdom, both conventional wisdom and ultimate wisdom. You know, based on the importance of conventional wisdom, of getting that the mundane facts of the matter correct, then applying uh, ultimate wisdom to the issue. So both are very important. ตาที่จิกาโซเลจิกาโซเลคนที่เนจูเดอร์ฮาวกอบาซังเดอร์พิงกูมันตัวฮาที่เนจูเดอร์รังเดอร์มิซินาลจานด์ดรอชิมะก
bases. And the first of these is based on objects. And uh, in, with regard here, it's really looking at the objects related to an re a renunciate. So it's talking about uh, robes, um, arms, bowls, bedding, seating, uh, medicine, etc. And that uh, for somebody who is renounced, that may all those things may be of inferior quality, they may not have enough of them, and the suffering that arises on that account uh, it needs to be accepted. Right. <laughs> And so, in re with regard to even you know householders, this can be easily applied as well, isn't it? That in many in, in respects, it's a very similar thing. You know, when we talk about clothing, possessions, uh, what you have, what you don't have, and so on. And it, you can see that this arises a lot with a kind of a competitiveness too, with regard to people of living in the lay life, and that uh, even though they might have you know reasonable possessions, there's still this comparison going on. Oh, they've got something better. Oh, my neighbor just bought a new car. Uh, it's uh, better than mine. And my car now is no good, and so on. This sort of like um, <laughs> buying into buying into suffering, and even related to even eating and drinking. You know that one can make this kind of uh, unfavorable comparison between what you have and what other people are uh, uh, have access to, and so you know it's, it's important to to uh, kind of say, okay, yes, so what I have in terms of what I rate as is good. Uh, that's fine. I'm happy with that. But uh, what I, I rate as not so good, uh, I'm happy with that too. I accept that as well. And so it, it's this kind of thing. Don't allow what you don't have to make you unhappy. So this so this a remarkable facility of thinking, you know, that uh, uh, those who, uh, who 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 don't have. Uh, can make themselves miserable because of what they don't have. Uh, but those who have uh, can equally make themselves miserable because of what they have. Uh, this, this facility of uh, uh, mistaken and pointless thinking. Whereas, you know, we really have to uh, consider that what I have is satisfactory. Uh, what I don't have is also uh, satisfactory. And be happy in both situations. Have a mind uh, that is steadfast. Uh, with regard to maintaining an equilibrium in, in one's thinking. And so in any case, uh, that which you have uh, is temporary. Uh, that state of not having is also uh, temporary. Uh, there, there's nothing that stays forever. No situation stays forever. No, it's, nothing is permanent. And so, so important to kind of be able to uh, see the positive, uh, regardless of what your situation is. And that means the most important thing is always to avoid allowing 
uh, the mental afflictions to take over. So, and that is uh, with regard to what, whether you have or you have not. So that control of mind. So that uh, if I feel I have, that's not going to allow the mind to be disturbed. I will see the positive in that. Uh, what I have not, equally so. I will not allow mental affliction to take over. I will see the positive in that. Because you are in a, you are the same to be you look at it. You are in a, you are the same to be you look at it. So, you can get a bit of it. And so they specifically to use what one has to control the mind, to use what one has not to control the mind, to see that both are conducive conditions to practice. What is it? So it's so important to understand that we have the means to be able to adopt uh, these beneficial, profitable, positive attitudes. And that's uh, but it means that we have to use those means. We have to use the method that is there for us. And the problem is that you know we don't, and that uh, so whether we have or haven't, e both cases because we can't use the situation to our own benefit, and we allow both to facilitate the uh, mental afflictions. And get that with that, and so therefore we we actually. accrue。if we actually are able to apply the uh, skillful means in both cases uh, to uh, take the best out of whether we have or have not. Uh, that is sort of that which qualifies us as a, a qualified being, qualified human being, a, 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 a capable person. Uh, so that person has, is using their capacity to establish uh, stable and ultimate happiness. And so you see the opposite, the alternative is that, you know, one is kind of like really in a very a uh, fickle and fragile state, kind of blown by the wind, so that in either situation, whether one has or has not, one is simply falling into the, the causes of more suffering, of creating more suffering. And, and that's quite tragic in a way. That's really quite pathetic. <laughs> So we can see this really played out in so many instances, isn't it? Like that uh, for you know, human beings misusing and abusing their intelligence so that actually whatever the situation is, whether they have or have not, they just see the the dark side, the bad side of, of everything, you know, that there is the capacity to see the positive and negative in everything, but and they use, they think it's smart just to kind of like see the downside of, uh, of everything, even if they have, you know, uh, received something quite interesting, quite, uh, quite uh, of value, they, they still pick holes in it, pick faults in it and say it's not quite good enough. <coughs> What 
So in a way, we have to uh, re-examine uh, the uh, the essential kind of responsibility of taking a precious human rebirth, of taking human rebirth, and that is that we need to make this opportunity meaningful. It really has to count, and it really has to count by really uh, putting a stop to the mental afflictions, not allowing any opportunity for the uh, mental afflictions to take over. And so it's very important that we see that in relation to making our life meaningful, making the Dharma teachings uh, meaningful to us, and that, uh, that it is the best means by which we can make uh, this life uh, meaningful both for ourselves and for others who, with whom we are in contact. So as I said last time too, you know, that's so important to not think that one hasn't got the time to engage in proper Dharma practice. That in fact, uh, that you always have time to engage in practice because you always have time to over and to uh, oppose the mental afflictions uh, because they will not take a, a holiday. And that, you know, whether you are eating, drinking, sleeping, walking, moving about, working, whatever you're engaged in, uh, that the mental afflictions will be seeking opportunity uh, to uh, invade your thinking, invade your mind, uh, overpower you. And so it's very important to avoid giving them that opportunity. Therefore, opposing uh, the mental afflictions at any time is valid uh, spiritual practice. Okay. Cut And so what's, what's so important in order to accompany this uh, practice is to uh, inspire ourselves uh, constantly to understand what an amazingly fortunate opportunity it is for me to be able to you know, have the, the wherewithal to recognize uh, what's happening in my mind and to be able to apply antidotes to oppose uh, mental afflictions like this. This is extraordinary. I'm so fortunate uh, to be able to do this and to really bring out one's own enthusiasm to kind of like not to think that this is sort of like a deadening kind of difficult job, but rather uh, it's a great opportunity at every moment. And what a, a wonderful profit gain I am gain, gaining from this and to kind of really see that, uh, you know, to make uh, one's practice fresh uh, constantly and to refresh uh, one's own attitude. It's so, so important and to see how wonderful I'm engaging in genuine spiritual practice. I am opposing uh, mental afflictions here. I'm kind of like really, and, and, and in doing so, allowing for uh, the opposite uh, of mental affliction, the virtuous side of my own, own character and personality to come to the fore. And to kind of really feel that you're in, involved in something that's really significant and bring that joy to bear on what you're doing. 
但出来进来上路的时候，我是看到考虑，出来进来上路，他都速速速给两边接，要么了看对家一点，没想法就老板的东西给了吧，都速速老板要了吧，那马进来打了吧，都速速老板要，但没想法就给打打几个问题，结果来来回回，可年嘛年还过嘛了吧，是吧？但速速速速的要么我出吧接，那看对家一点，就就那来拉了，他那不行了，他几个要嘛，可是呢，这速速的老板要了他，是吧？所以说，尿毛了，看这家都尿毛，俺这个喜马拉雅么都，这这么多，该来个嘛嘛呀？所以说，老外有点这个的，但没想到这来的，然后上了当中老外这个看这咱们的家也有了吧？是吧？但可能人家说，你们那马家哪个有了嘛？到各地人家各个别有嘛的，对吧？他，他多个这两个人说，你们那马家嘛，这，哎，广西人把独家有嘛，这，哎，你木村的嘞，这来路这多点有嘛？嗯。大家不晓得当了，我每天两百几万，每天出来要买，每天要买，看看出来的钱，所以说看出来也蛮老钱的。这我就尿到我地里多，地里头那尿毛了，够不着，够不着。So it's so important to understand how this is a kind of a personal uh, practice, and that it's an internal matter uh, between you and your own uh, thinking, and that really to think that that's the only sort of kind of uh, uh, area in which I have true, true, true rights in which to judge and to act because I really do know uh, when my mind is uh, influenced and overtaken by mental affliction uh, whether I choose to do anything about it or not that's the issue isn't it really and that uh, you know where, where if we're judging other people pointing out oh, how badly they're behaving and oh what they did and didn't do what they said and didn't say you know we have really less right to do that we don't know uh, to, to what degree their mind is affected and so on but uh, we do know that if we're constantly judging and criti criticizing like that other people that it's giving our own mental afflictions ample opportunity to control and to destroy our own virtue etc so it's so important for us to understand that you know, though it's difficult, it's so important to understand this is an internal matter that um, I have my own mental afflictions. Uh, they're, they've got their own sort of, you know, the, the, the permutations and combinations of them are particular uh, to me. But likewise, I have the power to deal with my own stuff, with my own mental afflictions. And at, uh, it, it's to to kind of like understand that this is not sort of, sort of something that I have to fight for in terms of human rights uh, to gain. I already have the, the means by which I need to be able to do this. I have the right uh, to be able to oppose my own mental afflictions. But of course, you know, I don't bother really. It's a, it's a question of a, a, um, ap application, you know. I, I don't bother. I don't allow it. And so therefore, uh, the habit of mental affliction gets stronger. Uh, I make myself more miserable as a, as a, uh, on the basis of that, and, and of course, feeding my own negative habit, habits uh, more and more and more. So it's un, uh, very important to understand that yes, uh, you have mental afflictions, but you are the one who needs to oppose those mental afflictions. And don't worry about others; just worry about getting your own mental afflictions eradicated. ジデンゲジデンゲさジデンゲチュレテバネスナトレタジデンゲチュレテバネアニチカソトタマジデンゲチュゲガザデジデンゲチュゲスクドワタロマニバワタニゴラソマトナマニバタソソトテルマニバチ
The second of these bases is uh, the base of uh, worldly concerns, and there are nine enumerated here. Uh, into, so this is the acceptance of suffering, uh, which arises based on loss, uh, on disgrace, on blame, on pain, on disintegration, extinguishment, uh, aging, sickness, and death. And it's really saying these are the worldly concerns, and that through uh, our analysis of each of them in turn, and to uh, learn to accept uh, the suffering arising in relation to them, in order to avoid uh, uh, having to experience future suffering. Mm. Thirdly, the acceptance of suffering based on physical activities. And this relates to the physical activities of moving around, the standing, of sitting, uh, of lying down. And it's really saying that in relation to uh, the first of these uh, moving and the third of sitting, and that uh, in day and night engaging in the activities of purifying uh, the mind in practice, uh, engaging in these two types of activities, and that it is correct for us to accept the suffering related to that. Tak so it's really saying, isn't it, that uh, in, in relation to whatever uh, suffering uh, arises, that uh, the best uh, uh, choice is to really accept uh, that suffering. And that uh, goes for whether it's external suffering in relation to activities as described uh, in this uh, subheading, or indeed uh, when uh, the causes and conditions uh, arise, that whatever suffering results uh, from that, uh, we should really uh, you know, it's understand that the most important thing is to not allow our mind to become unhappy uh, because of it. And that, uh, you know, to understand that by maintaining uh, that peace of mind, uh, that, uh, to, that a mind that is not disturbed, and that we are also putting a stop or halting uh, the future experiences of suffering for ourselves. Mm. Lama Lama la Chuching, Lama la Chuching, Zubuchevata. Chuch, Chuna, so I shall like Jacher Toma, can't do the Chema, Yang Damas, Semba, Shila Company, Yang Damas, Semba, Shila Coba, the Dana, Zoana, to which you want to live on. And the fourth of these bases, uh, the fourth of the eight, is the, the basis of upholding the teachings, so saying. And on that basis, to accept uh, suffering that arises, for example, from um, making offerings or serving 
the triple gem or one guru of uh, undertaking uh, to teach uh, extensively or the gaining an understanding of the Dharma of engaging in praying prayers of really uh, make, having uh, rectifying our mental attitude uh, developing <coughs> mental acquiescence uh, special insight etc that all of the practices that we strive to perfect all of the suffering that can arise in the course of that striving that we need to accept willingly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Long Again, the fifth of these eight uh, living by begging, uh, the uh, suffering related to that again. Primarily, uh, this is uh, referring to those who are renunciate. Uh, this may mean that one has, uh, say, an ugly appearance or patched clothing of poor quality. Uh, one's, uh, again, complexion is poor. Uh, all of these sort of uh, experiences that one uh, gains uh, through restraining from a worldly concerns, restraining oneself from worldly activities and acting in ways uh, other or different from what other people do. And this may be also, for example, not uh, engaging in the accumulation of the, or the employing of material uh, gain and that uh, <coughs> even for the sake of our uh, dar uh, clothing, our dharma robes, you need, need to seek them from others and that uh, you're uh, doing like the opposite of what normal human desires are, uh, not giving up one's, uh, giving up any uh, sexual contact or intercourse and human merriment <coughs> and all of the activities that people are engaging in. So that sort of life of a beggar, uh, living that, and all of the suffering that arises due to that, uh, again, it should be willingly accepted. <laughs> So mostly that refers to those who are renunciated. So the sixth of these is the accepting of suffering due to fatigue, uh, due to perseverance. And so here, when one is persevering in virtue, uh, that of course one's mind, one's body, uh, may become tired and fatigued and indeed disturbed. Uh, one is kind of a certain amount of exhaustion arising. And that uh, <coughs> any uh, suffering that arises in relation <coughs> to that, again, should be willingly accepted. <laughs> So <laughs> So, 
지어라. 이거죠. 마이키 바체나 다 잡아서 사람 마이키 바체들에 맞춰서 즉즉 다돌래. 아 이네 양코 양코 저 서류 못지나 거기 예수 자에 다 들어가서 양코 예수 자서 배코란 즉 양념에 제대로 잡아서 맞체. 양코 예수 자 예수 자서 양코 자서 또 서류 받아 양신에 양 소속이 지가서 양 모든 양에 제조하다. 다 들에 이번에서 거기 So, the penetrapen of Comja in by Nata, the Chase in by Nata, the Catcher, Lucy called Tichon, and the court took a sort of mixing Comja in the together called Tizitun, Jill, and Salmon Mutchet, Comja by Jail, Donal H. Donal H. What in the general took a sort of took a tap of a chair to get me but up. So in relation to uh, the working on the side of virtue, that yes, uh, there are, in, uh, of course, when we uh, engage in virtue like that and really kind of concentrate on that side, that it can bring with it a certain tiredness and fatigue and to really accept uh, that and to kind of like um, to, but understand also that, you know, to be, to be wise in one's uh, actions, that there is a time uh, when uh, it's good to take a break and to relax and to allow uh, the, uh, the body and mind to kind of recover because we're after all as beginners working with uh, a very coarse level of body and mind and so they, uh, the body and mind will become tired but it's so important uh, to avoid uh, becoming unhappy uh, because of that are getting down <coughs> because of that to really accept uh, that tiredness to say okay I'll take a, a short break not stop but take a break in order to be able to further continue my practice and so in terms of practices like meditation if we're on retreat like that uh, to kind of um, uh, uh, factor in uh, small uh, breaks to refresh and doing prostrations etc um, uh, any kind of uh, practices that we are, are doing and sometimes too it's better to kind of like uh, break up uh, meditations into uh, shorter uh, sessions but more of them for example fr more frequently do uh, meditation sessions but shorter to maintain the quality of the session and uh, you know also to uh, engage in say if you have a main practice that you're doing on retreat uh, to uh, continue that, but if you get very, very tired, engage in another uh, virtuous practice, not just a break, but another virtuous practice. So you're using skillful means uh, to keep yourself fresh. And so what's really key, of course, in this is also is that sense of rejoicing in your own practice and uh, having that uh, recognition of how fortunate I am to have the opportunity to practice and to kind of constantly uh, uh, feed your enthusiasm. Uh, that is a very important factor for persevering. And so the seventh uh, of these eight bases is to accept the suffering in relation to working for the benefit of sentient beings. And here it enumerates the 11 uh, purposes of working for sentient beings. But we can take from that really that in any situation where uh, sentient beings uh, require help or you can see some help to be given, and uh, that uh, one willingly takes that on and the suffering related to that. Uh, 
and then the eighth is the is, uh, accepting the sufferings related to uh, or based on current activities. And for renunciates, this would mean the work associated with procuring uh, <coughs> one's arms, bowl, one's robes, uh, all the uh, necessities for practice and so on. And for lay people, uh, this would be all of the uh, sufferings related to the faultless work done on farms or in business, uh, etc. Uh, all of the current activities that one engages in and the sufferings related to them, that one should willingly accept them. <laughs> Never and so the the third, then, main um, uh, subheading or heading uh, related to the per perfection of patience is referring to the perfections of gaining certitude uh, or conviction in the Dharma, in the teachings themselves. And uh, this is uh, based on generating uh, the forbearance of uh, conviction. And this again has eight different parts to it. <coughs> and then looking at the uh, different objects. And so first is the uh, object of faith. And here it's contemplating uh, the qualities of the triple gem. Uh, the second is the object to be actualized. And that is the reality of the two selflessnesses, the selflessness of persons and of phenomena. And thirdly, is the object to be desired, or the desired object. And this, of course, is the great power of the Bodhisattvas and the, the Buddhas. The fourth and fifth are uh, referring to uh, that which is the object to be actualized or adopted, sorry, and the object to be uh, discarded. Uh, this refers to uh, the... Uh, the, the uh, the, the causes that lead to uh, positive or virtuous activities, which must be adopted, of course, and the causes that lead to uh, negative or fault, faulty activities need to be discarded. And uh, also, and of course, the, in relation to the, the results as well, there is the, the uh, desire for the results of the former virtue, uh, which is to be adopted, and the uh, the uh, to have uh, to lose the desire for the results of that which is negative, which is suffering, of course. Um, six and seven uh, refers to the object of meditation, and this uh, uh, relates to the goals to be uh, achieved, and the method for achieving those goals. Uh, the eight is the, uh, the, uh, the, the object of uh, subsequent practice of uh, learning, one's learning and one's contemplation, uh, which refers to the realization of impermanence, etc. And this is as uh, found in the, uh, the power lineage chapter of the Bodhisattva's levels, that text. And it's, it, that refers to, for example, also the three different uh, categories of, of teachings and in, in, in reference to developing conviction it's, to, it's kind of first of all really gaining conviction in the way things are, the actuality of things 
such that there is no contradiction in our minds and then constantly reflecting on that again and again and again. So in relation to that point of uh, really finding uh, things just as they are, uh, conviction in that, and then uh, proceeding to constantly reflect again and again without uh, any finding any contradiction in that. So this is not simply a case of saying, you know, just accept it on blind faith. What he's actually saying is the opposite of that. He's saying that when you are applying one's analysis and reflection, it's important to do so on the basis of valid reasoning and to really uh, gain uh, that sense of uh, valid reasoning. So, for example, take the topic of refuge and uh, the, the triple gem. And so why would we regard, say, the Buddha as the one who demonstrates refuge to the Dharma as that which is the actual refuge and the, the Sangha as those who uh, really uh, accompany us on the path and are an exemplar to us. And so you really you look at each of these in turn and say, uh, uh, why is the Buddha qualified to show us uh, the path uh, that uh, he began as a, an ordinary person, just like us, under the influence of uh, the karma and the mental afflictions as well and um, but uh, really saw uh, what was necessary uh, to see really felt the sense of dissatisfaction and wanted to do something about it uh, thereafter generated the pure renunciation uh, the uh, correct view of emptiness and the uh, mind of enlightenment and uh, on the basis of uh, relying on uh, gurus generated the path, strove to uh, perfect uh, those uh, trainings on the path, and eventually attained uh, the state of in enlightenment. And so he had did done, he has done the hard yards. Uh, he has gained uh, that right to show us the path, to say, this is how I did it. Look, it's a reliable path. And then when we look at the Dharma in terms of, you know, the Dharma as the actual uh, refuge, uh, to uh, see that it demonstrates to us what the root cause of cyclic existence is, and uh, not only that, that that, that is the self-grasping uh, self-attitude, uh, but also that the wisdom of selflessness is possible, and to see that that's the antidote, the perfect antidote to that, 
and for us to gain conviction uh, more and more in the veracity, the validity of uh, those representing uh, the uh, the teachings on refuge, and of course with the uh, the, the the Dharma or the Sangha jewel, referring to the Arya uh, Sangha, uh, those who really demonstrate uh, the path to us, it's likewise gaining that sense of uh, actuality of uh, what they represent and uh, the uh, the kind of like the the logic of being able to uh, gain not just the sense of pure faith and uh, but also the faith of conviction and the, faith, the manifest faith in in what uh, this represents so that one is moving away constantly far from a sort of a, a blind faith uh, rank acceptance of things but is putting it to analysis and it's it, it living up to and being able to bear that analysis that uh, on the basis of that giving us far more conviction in what we are uh, doing what we're undertaking than we would otherwise have <laughs> So yes, it's uh, to to kind of constantly uh, remind ourselves that there are these these qualities are there uh, within the, the Dharma, what I am actually engaging in, and that I have seen those qualities for myself that they sit well uh, with my mind I don't have to struggle uh, with them anymore that this accords with uh, with the reality that I understand uh, that uh, there's this the selflessness of persons selflessness of phenomena uh, that uh, in the terms of uh, you know what uh, my core desire is that I want uh, happiness and I don't want uh, suffering and that uh, the the core problem is uh, the reason why I can't constantly experience happiness I want and I am inundated with uh, so many undesirable sufferings that I do not want is simply because I am mistaken with regard to these two selflessnesses I haven't realized what they are I don't see reality and so when I uh, again uh, that understanding. I see the importance of being able to uh, develop uh, the, the wisdom of being able to uh, generate the selflessness of persons and the selflessness of phenomena as a as a realization in my own mind. Okay. Do Yes, the object to be desired, uh, the uh, the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas, and the great power of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, and so to to really uh, ascertain that in one's own thinking as well that there is this object that I am working towards, and uh, to have that uh, appreciation of uh, of the kind of like the power of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, but the possibility that uh, by establishing the causes, I will be able to achieve those results as well. Okay. 
And then the fourth and fifth of these uh, objects is the object of uh, that which is to be adopted and that which is to be discarded. And they're saying that here we need to be really gain a sense of being unmistaken with regard to what I need to practice on the one hand and what I need to really abandon on the other. So the causes that lead to, uh, that give rise to uh, positive activities, the causes that lead to faulty or negative activities, to make the clear distinction, uh, to make uh, that ever clear that one will lead to undesirable results and one will lead to desirable results. And to understand that that relationship is, uh, is, kind of, is, is a, uh, a sympathetic relationship. In other words, uh, it, there's a harmony between the cause and, and the result. And to kind of have that conviction in oneself is to understand then more clearly, okay, def de definitely this is what I need to adopt and practice, and definitely this is what I need to dispel and discard and abandon. <laughs> and of course six and seven uh, the objects of meditation that we mentioned the object to be achieved the goal to be achieved of course is the state of enlightenment itself for the benefit of all sentient beings and the other object of meditation is referring to the means for achieving that uh, of course to engage in all uh, the stages of the path uh, to uh, perfect all the perfections the four ways of accumulating disciples etc uh, these are the means by which we attain that goal. And the eighth is the, uh, referring to the, uh, the developing of the wisdom arising from uh, learning and the wisdom arising from contemplation and the subsequent practices related to, to those, uh, gen those wisdoms, uh, such as the uh, developing of uh, the realization of impermanence and selflessness, for example. And of course, any of the realizations on the six perfections, and so uh, are the five uh, paths or the ten grounds, and, uh, and you know, as the five paths as they are symbolized in the, the mantra of Tayata Gate Gate Paragate Parasangate Bodhisattva. Yes, and that uh, these uh, enumerations, <coughs> these kind of a uh, list of eight, uh, come from the power lineage chapter of the Bodhisattva levels. Where it refers to also the three great collections of teachings or texts and uh, the, the means by which we generate this sense of uh, conviction is this uh, really finding conviction in the way things are as we said and then uh, which is in, in not in any way in, in, in contradiction or contravening and to bring that kind of bear in our minds through constant uh, reflection on it, as again I explained just before. And so that in terms of the practices related to uh, the attainment of liberation and the omniscient state of enlightenment, uh, we approach that through learning, then contemplation and meditation and that uh, you know v developing on the basis of that triple uh, uh, approach 
the necessary conviction to actually attain each stage of the path. Uh, the fourth of the, the main original outlines is then how to practice, how to practice patience. And that's, uh, so here, in any practice of patience that we uh, engage in, it, it should be accompanied by the uh, six uh, supremacies and the six perfections. And that's, uh, apart from uh, the, uh, the patience of uh, uh, generosity, uh, which is uh, exemplified by our leading others uh, to practice patience, uh, all the rest is as was explained before in the previous perfections. <laughs> And so the summary, and then the fifth of the, the main headings from the beginning, the summary of the perfection of patience is that the, the recollection and the cultivation of the mind of enlightenment, which is the basis of the uh, Bodhisattva deeds, uh, is the root of the wish to establish all beings in a patience where they have is extinguished uh, the uh, contaminations. Yes, and that then it's the kind of a steady increase of that uh, attitude of mind so that we reach the high levels of patience uh, practice. And that is what we, uh, the object that we need to aspire to and uh, to uh, uh, apply ourselves in to engage in the actual activities of. So, kind of more straightforward way of putting that is to really understand the three different categories of patience of uh, not returning harm for harm, of uh, willingly accepting suffering, and of uh, developing that uh, uh, attitude or conviction of forbearance in the uh, gaining conviction in the Dharma. And that uh, to do our very, very best uh, to uh, perfect those categories of patience is that which brings us to the perfection of patience. <laughs> Also, it's extremely important to understand the, the place of our practice of patience in relation to uh, all other uh, Dharma practices and to see that they are completely interrelated so that uh, the greater our practice of patience, uh, the greater our uh, practice of all other aspects of the Dharma. But the, the, the less patience that we have also has the deteriorating or deteriorating uh, deteriorous uh, effect on all other practices of Dharma as well. <laughs> Uh, 
and so in relation to the six perfections as well i think it's not difficult to see uh, the uh, powerful uh, influence of uh, the perfection of patience in the practice of any of the other uh, perfections uh, for example like generosity you can see here that uh, patience is essential really uh, as a kind of a uh, that which uh, really uh, aids any practice of generosity so that when anybody who is begging for uh, anything from us or asking for anything from us that we have that sort of sense of joy at being having the opportunity uh, to uh, engage in generosity again is to the fore and then we can see that with any uh, with the absence of patience that sense of joy is going to be more difficult to get, uh, to arise to 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 come to mind so I mean, those, those who have traveled in Asia or India and places where there's a lot of beggars, you know, have an experience of this. That, uh, you know, you can give to the first one or two. But of course, if you do, uh, it might attract another 10 and then 20 <laughs> and then 50. And so you find it like, where are you going to get the patience to be able to give to all of them? So it really, it quickly tells you where your limit of patience is. And so that's what I mean, that patience... Mm. And so, yeah, so it's, it's not necessarily that you, you, you need to give to all of them, but that because you will have a limit in the amount of money that you have anyway. But that... Uh, that anger doesn't arise, that frustration doesn't arise at that time. Uh, that's where your patience comes in, and that you can still stay cool. So, <laughs> and so that... <laughs> Indians are very good at this. They kind of, uh, they kind of like hunt in packs when it comes to begging, <laughs> and uh, that they'll send one out first. And so you, you think, yeah, that's easy. Just one person will be able to give something. But uh, as soon as they leave, three arrive. <laughs> then you've got to, you know, uh, test your patience. Um, and patience, of course, not just in terms of uh, our practice of generosity, but patience is very, very uh, key to the maintaining of uh, pure ethical conduct as well, uh, to uh, not allow uh, anger to influence or degenerate our practice. And in sense of uh, all the other uh, perfections, whether it's uh, um, joyful uh, perseverance, uh, meditative concentration, wisdom, uh, we can see uh, the... Uh, uh, interrelation or interdependence with um, patients practice as well. So, it of course, you know, patience is uh, is something that has constant practical application for us. You know, it's like because uh, we're always on the verge of impatience, really, in many ways. You know, like uh, you know, when see somebody we meet, they. Uh, you know, they say uh, uh, something uh, disagreeable to us. Uh, you know, the the response is always on the tip of our tongue, isn't it? That we come out with, and I'm going to give them a dose of the truth. You know, as if you think, oh, this is this is much smarter what I'm saying, and that uh, it's impatience uh, that has 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 brought this up. 
and that you know this is saying that showing you just how sly and how adventitious the mental afflictions are they take the opportunity immediately uh, to influence the words as even as they're coming out of your mouth <laughs> so it's also in terms of the kind of harsh criticism that we can have of uh, other people behind their backs, not directly to them, you know, and that uh, we think this is sort of like, uh, you know, normal uh, sort of uh, talk, you know, just engaging in uh, this sort of talk, but we're highly, highly critical. And that uh, it's a, it doesn't appear to us as impatience, but it is a case of our not being able to, to, to bear uh, the way they are, that we have to engage in this kind of harsh criticism. So it's, it's a case of there's a lack of uh, equilibrium or peace of mind, you've disturbed the mind in some way, that brings forth this kind of critical language, even though it's not in front of them. <laughs> So it's, it shows that wherever you are, in whatever situation, uh, ne- uh, patience is highly necessary. And so b- even if, if it's just for the, the purpose of not giving mental affliction the chance, not giving mental affliction the opportunity. So it's like there when we talk about you know what is Dharma practice, what is Dharma practice, what is Dharma practice, it's, it always comes down to at the very heart is opposing mental afflictions. And when can you do that? You can do that all the time, you know, whenever. It's kind of like working out any way in which you can avoid giving opportunity the upper ha- uh, mental affliction the upper hand of putting a stop to of counteracting of applying antidotes to mental affliction what do i need to do what do i need to do to avoid the mental affliction so that you can be absolutely sure mental afflictions very very sly very very smart always looking for opportunity uh, to uh, have their influence and so therefore from our side we should be looking at all opportunity all the time uh, to counteract and to avoid uh, the uh, giving the, giving mental affliction that chance so we can see that, that uh, you know the the kind of perfidious influence of mental affliction is often that it begins at such a, a kind of like a, a insignificant almost imperceptible uh, level uh, within our awareness and that uh, but we we don't have any uh, means of stopping uh, it at that level so it's allowed uh, to kind of uh, slowly take hold and slowly 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 becomes more and more strong more and more pervasive in, in our mentality in our thinking in the strings of thoughts that we have and until we become unhappy it it, it it starts to destroy our happiness and as that then becomes we, we, we enter into that sort of slump or funk uh, we turn to engaging in all sorts of uh, negative and uh, ignoble uh, activities <laughs> And that uh, those uh, mental afflictions are no respecter of persons when it comes to creating unhappiness like that. Whether one is engaging in spiritual practice or not engaging in spiritual practice, it doesn't matter. Uh, the mental afflictions are, uh, you know, they don't discriminate. They get everybody. <laughs> so we leave it there for today.
Oh, looks like someone. Oh, so we have to do our voting, isn't it? Uh, voting. <laughs> So we do an Amrim uh, prayer from my two collections, Master Space, that I have collected. For a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose minds wisdom eyes blinded by ignorance. Even if I do not reach this state, may I be held in your loving compassion for all lives and interesting. May I find the best of complete graded paths of the teachings, and may I please all the Buddhas by my practice. Using skillful means drawn by the strong force of compassion, may I clear the darkness from the minds of all beings. With the points of the path as I have discerned them, may I hold the Buddhist teachings for a very long time. With my heart going out with great compassion in whatever direction the most precious teachings is not yet spread, one spread have declined, may I reveal this treasure of happiness and aid. May the minds of those who wish for liberation be granted bounty to peace, and the Buddhist deeds be nourished for a long time. By even this graded path of enlightenment completed, due to the one virtuous conduct of, of, of the Buddhas and their children, may, may all human and non human beings who eliminate adversity and create conducive conditions for practicing the excellent paths never be parted in any of their lives from the pure path raised by the Buddhas. Whenever someone makes effort to act in accordance with the tenfold Mahayana virtuous practices, may they always be assisted by the mighty ones, and may oceans of prosperity spread every way. Thank you. 